medical issues always seem to happen at once, don't they? Uh, I've had a few things that have been worrying me. Uh, I turned 50 this year, and that means that it's the time when I need to get my prostate checked. And I've had a few issues the past few weeks that have made me think I need to get this done. So today I am having blood tests done at Hillingdon Hospital and I also have to give a urine sample. So I'm on my way to the health centre to pick up the bottle for the sample and the forms to take to the hospital and then I'll go straight to the hospital. But on top of that, a few days ago um, when I opened the convection oven and then was programming it, I must have momentarily looked at the mesh grill inside the oven which was lit up very brightly because for 10 minutes afterwards and this was one of the scariest things I've ever had um, all I could see was like a zigzag circle in my left eye like the imprint of it and once it disappeared it then left like a trail of what looked like colored fairy lights down the side for a few more minutes and then it subsided. I had a bit of a headache um, and then the next day, a couple of days, it seemed to be fine until on the second night after when I was at work I'd been sitting looking at the screen uh, for longer than I should have been without taking a screen break. Um, everything just went white blotches so I was like reading stuff across the screen but all I was seeing was white blotches now I think and I'm hoping it may be the fact that my eyes were tired that I hadn't taken a screen break and what I might have been seeing were floaters that I have in my eyes which very rarely bother me but perhaps it made them more prevalent um, but as a precaution I am going to have uh, an emergency eye examination at the opticians today. Um, so it's going to be a full on day of medical issues. It's been about an hour since I had my blood test. Um, it was a bit difficult finding a vein and apparently I'm a slow bleeder as well. So it took a while to take the blood and they needed several vials. I started to feel very sweaty, very clammy, um, I had to ask for some water and then after they took the blood um, they put the chair back and I had to lie back for about five minutes and then I sat in the waiting room for another five minutes. Um, Hillingdon Hospital has a great restaurant as well so it is lunchtime and I just needed to go there and I had a roast beef dinner because, um, of course, today I now have to go to Specsavers, uh, immediately getting back to Uxbridge for my eye test. I'm on my way back from the opticians and uh, I've been there for two hours having various tests. So the good news is that there are no problems with the general health of my eyes. Everything looks normal. However, um, it seems that I've been suffering from something which I'd never heard of before. It's called Vision Aura. Um, it's basically hallucinations, uh, visual hallucinations, which can be triggered by any number of things, possibly by the incident with the convection oven the other day. Stress can also bring it on. And as I'm recording this, it's we're halfway through the morning period for the Queen and uh, there's been long days at work, lots of eyes in front of screens for long periods of time. And I am, I'm, all, I'm always guilty for not taking screen breaks and I've been not even taking any sort of break. So I've been told that for the next few days uh, by the optician that I've got to take a few minutes screen break every hour and that there is a possibility that I could have another one of these episodes as she called them 
Um, I also have floaters and it's possible that what I was seeing as well as, as the sort of the hallucination type thing that she described um, is that it could have been a floater that was just in my my sort of vision directly on the screen so we'll just have to monitor things over the next few days and hopefully it'll all settle down but the good news is is that there's no serious issues with my eyes she did however want to call me back on a yearly basis now for a glaucoma check because the air pressures were quite high um, that is possibly caused by the fact that I'm not very good at having the air puff test and uh, I have like, really strong reflexes in my eyes so it could possibly just be registering false readings there uh, but it's good that um, they want to monitor things for you know on a yearly basis so top marks to spec savers it's the following Tuesday and there is good news my prostate blood results came back and it shows a reading of 0 0.6 anything between 0 and 4 is within normal range and the prostate test went normally as well there are no issues it seems that I am suffering from dehydration more than anything else um, so I need to drink more tea coffee preferably water I suppose I've always been guilty of not drinking enough and there was one issue with my liver blood results it's showing that I do still have fatty liver I've been living with this for years and I have to have further blood tests in January just to keep it under observation but all in all it's a relief um, but I would recommend that any man who is at the age of 50 or over should have a prostate examination it's free on the NHS for 50 year olds and over and you can get further information by visiting the website on the screen now If you've got a history of glaucoma in your family, it's a good idea to get your eyes tested at least every year. And Specsavers does a test for £10, which checks for the condition. Um, so I go every year because um, there is a history of glaucoma in my family. My grandmother had it. And I think it's also a good idea just to get your eyes tested um, for general health reasons and also to check that your vision, your vision is okay. So as they say, you better go to Specsavers. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up my new glasses right now. Well, I said I'd better go to Specsavers, but I'm afraid uh, there's bad news. My appointment was for today, two weeks after I had the test. I get into the store and I'm told, very sorry, sir, but the person who billed your glasses hasn't done it. So I'm going to have to wait another week. It's just as well, I can still see out of these ones in the meantime. So it's not actually a week later, it's later the same day. About five minutes after I came out of Specsavers, I got a call on the phone to say they'd made a mistake and that the glasses were actually ready. I was on the train. So I did what I had to do, came back, I picked them up, and yes, I think they're okay. I've been given two weeks to get used to them. Um, I don't think there's a green tint of them. I think that's just the lighting here. Um, there's a slightly different peripheral view. Um, they are very focals, and I think I just need, need to get used to the difference where they far and near come together. So hopefully I won't be making another film to attach to the end of this saying it's all been a complete disaster and I can't get used to them. So let's hope that they are indeed okay. Thank you for watching our show today. If you like what you see, then please like, comment and subscribe. Keep watching. Didn't mean to scare you. For the past few weeks, I have been suffering from a wart on my thumb and it's right on the fold. 
and it's become quite sore. Um, I've had a wart there before and I've used um, home remedies to get rid of it, actually. When I say home remedies, not ones, potions that I've made up myself, but stuff that I've bought from the pharmacist. It used to be, in days gone by, you could get a wart burnt off at the doctor's surgery or at the hospital. But the NHS is a bit reluctant to spend money on that these days. But you can buy over-the-counter remedies such as the Skull, Veruca and Wart Complete Treatment Pen. So I bought this the other day and that's what you can see at the moment. I've been using it for three days and it starts to burn it off over a period of time. So just to explain what it is, um, so what is the Skull, Veruca and Wart Treatment Pen and how does it work? Uh, well, it says it's clinically proven to treat verrucas and warts on hands and feet. It contains a gel based on the active medical ingredient TCA active, which induces peeling of the infected skin. The thickened skin and its cost of virus are removed and new healthy skin will appear. The one click pen comes with a precision tip for targeted application. A blue colouring agent is added to the gel to further facilitate precise application and to prevent accidental application to healthy skin. So the first time you use this, it can take up to 50 clicks for the gel to appear because it relies on a pressure. And what you can see here, there's two little lines and that means that the pen is ready to open. If it was, you can, you can lock it by going over like this, but two little lines together and it comes like this and basically um, once I've opened that the gel should start to appear but I can just click it a few times and of course I'm going to have to click it with the my, my other hand but I think it is important to say what a wart and a verruca the verruca is what you find on uh, on your feet and a wart is on your hand usually Common warts appear on the skin as small rough cauliflower like growths caused by human pathology <laughs> Papillomavirus, HPV, that's easier, easier to say. Infection, common warts occur mostly on hands, fingers or toes. Verrucas mainly grow on the soles of the feet or heels and tend to be flatter, harder and are often tender, painful when walking or standing. Now it says that if you use this pen twice a day for four days, it should start to peel away the actual wart part of the, of the skin and it's also important not to use the pen use the gel on healthy skin because it does burn and I misfired the second day I did it and um, it did really start to burn and felt really sore for about a good hour but the thing is now that I've started to use it a few times um, I can see more where the the wart actually is because it's this point of blue so here we go. I can see there's a little bit of gel coming out, but not enough. So I'm clicking it. And I can see a blob of gel appearing. Maybe another click. Right. OK, this is the point where I don't want it to go in the wrong place. That's it. It's as simple as that. And what I have to do now is to let it dry. It takes about 15 minutes to form a sort of, um, will become like a gel-like, to turn from liquid into gel. Um, so I have to hold this thumb still, not move it around, not bend it, otherwise it will end up going on the healthy skin. So while I'm doing that, and this is the awkward bit now, I'm going to hold the pen like this, and get the top back on. And you want to get the two arrows from the lid and the pen together to close it up properly. And I'll just go on the table like this. And you can turn it round to lock it, but it actually does hold quite firm anyway. Um, if there are children around, then it's probably a good idea to put it into the lock position because if they got their, their hands on this, it could cause a nasty burn. So we'll see how I get on with this for the next few days and I shall report back.
Well, you can see that the wart has healed up quite nicely. I used the gel for five days and then it formed a kind of a, a scab over the top of it and it eventually came off. Now the wart has gone. There's still a little bit of healing to be done. It feels a little bit sore um, at, at times, but um, I would say another week or so, this should be healed completely. And I just hope that the wart doesn't come back. The problem with using this gel is that it sometimes doesn't get right to the root of it which is what would happen um, using the freezing technique that the NHS used to use. But we shall see.